For trans females, the facial shaping around the eyes and forehead can lead to being perceived as male, which can result in, in undesired outing or degrade the person's quality of life, psychosocial well-being, or even lead to transphobic discrimination or potentially even violence. For these reasons and more, facial feminization surgery serves as a critical role in gender confirmation. Our guest today is Dr. Eduardo Rodriguez. He's the chief and professor and chairman of NYU Department of Plastic Surgery. He's a renowned craniofacial surgeon and a pioneer in, in facial transplantation. He and his co-authors have published this incredible new study in the Journal of Plastic and Reconstructive Surgery describing their techniques and refinements in gender confirmation surgery that contours the bones around the eyes and forehead for a dramatic effect. So Ed, welcome. How you doing, Rod? Great to see you. Great to see you too. So tell us about bone contouring and what is this procedure and how would a patient opt for this? Well, thank you for the question, Rod. I think for most of these patients as they're transitioning, part of their gender confirmation surgery really details a lot of the upper face. And more importantly, when the patient is seen in profile, which is kind of a dead giveaway. Right. For most of these patients, the best way that we can go ahead and contour this is through a coronal incision, which is an approach that we commonly use for a lot of craniofacial procedures. But beyond just the routine contouring with a burr, we found that it's actually safer and you get far better results when you can osteotomize the anterior table, the frontal sinus. You can bird at the back table, but more importantly, it allows you for posterior recessing or posterior repositioning of that frontal bandeau. And while you're there, you also have a great opportunity to kind of burr down the supraorbital rims, and you could also burr the housing of the supraorbit or the periorbital first festoon. If you were to look at a skull, which I have here, right. you can see from the profile view, the significant uh, prominence at the frontal bandeau. Commonly, if you just burr this within less than a millimeter, you're inside the frontal sinus. So right. removing the anterior table, burring it, and then recessing it allows you not only to address this area, but you can also deal with the uh, periorbital festoons. You can raise the supraorbital ridge and allow for far more feminized appearance of the frontal bone. So what, do, uh, what does this study mean to the public at large, uh, Ed, when, when they're trying to find someone that does this highly specialized procedure? I think that the key issue is that anybody that undergoes this operation should have a craniofacial CT because there are small percentages of patients that on occasion they could have some underlying pathology. Right. And actually you wrote an article many years ago studying uh, frontal sinus anatomy and the importance of recognizing the nasal frontal outflow tract. Right. That's an area that we do not want to disturb. We, under, we want to understand the normal communication from the frontal sinus to the nose. That cannot be compromised. If it is, it could lead to mucosal and a whole slew of potential complications. So understanding the craniofacial anatomy, understanding right. the front nasal frontal outflow tract, and really gives you an understanding of how big the sinus is and how much work it will detail. So it's not just as simple as getting access to the frontal bone and burring. You really have to have a good understanding of the underlying anatomy. Yeah. That's very important, really finding somebody who's a true expert that has expertise in craniofacial surgery and also has a sense of aesthetics like you do in, in shaping this. So what does a patient need to know to find somebody that does this, Dr. Rodriguez? I think ideally we want an individual that's board certified in plastic surgery and right. has some experience with cranial facial surgery or has been trained at a center where they have a, a great number of patients that undergo some form of cranial facial surgery or an individual that's partnered with someone with this type of expertise. I think anyone can burr down the bone, but gaining access to the frontal sinus, avoiding any injury to the nasal frontal outflow tract, and also avoiding any injury to the brain or the posterior table, I think is very important for patients to understand. That is excellent, very prudent advice to get safe outcomes. 